Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the 9 p.m. live news edition. Here are the top stories. Visit of the winning site of the Future Football Academy in Dubai. Ministry of Muslim Affairs meets ulama imam and predicators. Taliban and government agree on ceasefire for Eid al-Adha. Hello, welcome to a newsroom for having the news in details. Following the tour of the President in the region of the interior and within the framework of accelerating the realization of the Greek during the meeting of proximities between uh, President Dele and the representative of the population of Tajra, the chairman of the House Representative, Mr. Mohammed Ali Muhammad, visited the Tajra region to hold meetings with the fishing companies and regional authorities. Discussion uh, focused on a meeting held by the President of the National Assembly with representative of these companies on ways to develop fisheries resources in the Tajra region. The president of the regional council, Mr. Omar Hussein, and the fishermen of the Tajra region, in addition to representatives of the regional authorities, participated in this uh, meeting. After a brief meeting with the uh, president of the regional council of the Tajra region, Mr. Omar Hussein, the president went to the headquarters of the Fishermen's Association to hold a closing meeting with them to discuss the improvement of working conditions. Discussion focused on ways and means of developing fisher resources in the Tajra region. The fishermen of this region expressed their thanks and gratitude to the president of the parliament for his uh, visit. The African Development Bank has just approved a financial grant of $4.16 uh, million, about $7.3 billion franc to Djibouti to keep pace with the government's effort to confront the coronavirus. This budget support will, will also help reduce the risk of contamination of the cross-border uh, population. Now, the Ministry of Women and Family organized in cooperation with the National Union of Jewish Women this morning at the UNFD headquarters, an event dedicated to the delivery of equipment to the, for the empowerment of Jewish women for the benefit of 117 widows in the capital, Djibouti. The event was shared by the Ministry of Women and Family, Mrs. Bouman Ahmed Hassan, Vice President of the National Union of Djibouti Women, uh, Mrs. Hassan Ahmed, the Secretary General of the Ministry of Social Affairs and Solidarity, Mrs. Ifrah, the representative of the United Nations Development Program in charge of the United Nations Population Funds Office, the representative of the Charity Society and the Director of People Saving Funds. This event aims to improve the living condition of these widows and their empowerment. The material distributed includes food products, sieving machines, fruits and vegetables uh, that will allow the uh, beneficiaries to open a special income generating project to meet their basic needs. In our address to the representative of the United Nations Development Program, Mrs. Fatima, on this occasion, she indicated that the importance of this event in improving the living condition of these widows and empowering them. For her part in a speech to her uh, in, in this occasion, the uh, General uh, Secretary of the National Union of Djibouti Women, uh, Mrs. Fatima Musa, said that this event aims to provide social assistance to more than 115 widows in order to enable them and integrate them into different areas of life. The event was coordinated by the National Union of Women of Djibouti. Ministry of Social Affairs and Solidarity, the United Nations Development Program, the United Nations Population Fund, the Non People's Fund Charity Society for Loans and Savings. The equipment distributed includes food projects, saving machines, fruit, and visual that will enable uh, to uh, uh, open special and income generating projects to meet their basic needs. Now, the uh, Women and Family Ministers explained the importance of supporting women in all their income generating activities. Let's listen to what she said. The objective of this event is to allow women who have been touched 
par la crise sanitaire qu'a connue le monde, des femmes qui avaient une activité journalière. The objective of this event is to enable women who have been affected by the health crisis in the world to have an income and to be able to feed and respond to the needs of their population through their daily activity. Unfortunately, the crisis prevented them from carrying out this activity or even destroyed their activities. So they found themselves back where they started, without activity and without income. Therefore, it was important for UNICEF and the Ministry of Women and Family and the Siberian government which has already done a lot to be able to rehabilitate these women there and to enable them to have an activity and to resume their activity and have economic empowerment. This activity of economic empowerment of women that we are looking for, we are looking for women not to be able to depend on institutions or on a man, not on anyone. The woman must be economically empowered to contribute to the well-being of her family. As a man goes to work, brings back an income and goes to do a daily activity, he brings back income. A woman who is healthy and able to do this activity also to contribute to the well-being of her family. This woman's economic empowerment initiative is the initiative that we have been working closely for the past four years. We found a number of shortcomings, a number of factors that prevented this initiative from achieving its intended objective. And when we looked at the problems, we saw the need for a quick and immediate response to be able to give this woman's economic empowerment initiative. The Ministry of Health is urging the population to respect barrier justice. All institutions receiving the public, such as banks, administrations, restaurants, hotels, and also shops, are required to scrupulously respect the barrier justice. Following the instruction of the President of the Public, Head of Government, His Excellency, Mrs. Smiley Margelli, the fee for issuing a certificate of negativity for passengers has been revised downward for an amount of uh, 5,000 francs to 2,000 francs as of July uh, 30, 2020. Passengers using the air routes are still charged 5,000 francs uh, for the certificate. Now, the uh, Minister of Islamic Affairs Culture, Mr. Mumin Hassan Bari, at the People's Palace shared a meeting of imams and cleric within the framework of the minister's monthly and permanent consultation. At the beginning of this meeting, the Ministry of Islamic Affairs extended his best congratulations and best wish for health, happiness and success to the President of the Republic, Mr. Smail Margheli, and his wife, the First Lady, uh, uh, President of the uh, Union of Women of Juhuri, Mrs. Khadra Mahmoud Haidt, and to the Prime Minister, Mr. Abdul Qadir Kamil Mohammed, members of the government, parliamentarians, the people of Djibouti, and the Islamic nation as a whole, on the occasion of Eid al Adha. It, it also congratulated the eminent researchers on that occasion, commending their role in the effort to combat the COVID 19 pandemic during the two periods of total containment and relaxing it, indicating that its ministry was and remains a major player in the fight against the pandemic and that it is continuing its daily awareness raising activities on the need to respect the uh, barrier uh, justice uh, taken uh, by uh, the uh, government uh, decision to prevent the spread of the virus. The Ministry referred in his speech to a draft law aimed at reorganizing the structure of the Ministry of Islamic Affairs and Culture, explaining that this project is part of the desired change on the institutional, religious and cultural scene and responds to the instruction of the President of the Republic, Mr. Ismail Merkeli, in order to create the necessary dynamics to achieve the desired objectives. On this occasion, the Ministry of Islamic Affairs, Culture and Endowment, Mr. Mumin Hassan Barre, urged the activate, to activate the role of mosques by teaching the Holy Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet, educating the community and leading it to the right path in which its validity lies in its religion. Now the High Islamic Council affiliated to the Ministry of Islamic Affairs announced that the Eid al-Adha prayer for the year 2020 will be next Friday at 6.30 a.m. Imams of uh, the Eid collective prayer places in the capital region must respect the schedules and take barrier measures to protect themselves against the spread of the coronavirus, including wearing masks, using personal uh, prayer mats, etc. Thus, the Islamic High Council takes this opportunity to extend its best wish to the President of the Republic, all the people and the Islamic nation. In its turn, the Diwan of Waqf of the Ministry of Islamic Affairs insists on the need to wear masks during the Eid uh, prayer. Now, the uh, Mayor of Djibouti, Mr. Fadima Awala Usman, shared a meeting 
this morning to assess the strategy of the Djibouti City Development Plan 2020-2024. The development plan of the City of Djibouti aims to organize, the pro to promote and promote pardon, development at the local level by strengthening social dialogue, the aspirations and needs of the population, taking into account the major national trends. It is the first time of its kind that the mayor of the city of Djibouti has drawn up his strategic plan to promote the development of the capital thanks to the work presented by the various committees of mayors of uh, the uh, Djibouti city. And at the end of the meeting, the mayor of uh, Djibouti and the committee of members uh, to the municipal council unanimously approved the strategic development plans of the city of Djibouti. Now, as part of the fight against the coronavirus, a team from the Central Laboratory for Building and Construction Equipment carried out an inspection tour of the new construction site. This team, which carried out the inspection tour, included the closest collaborators of the director uh, to the National Laboratory of Buildings and Construction Equipment. The purpose of the surprise visit was to see if construction companies were complying with preventive measures to effectively combat the COVID-19 outbreak. The team toured several construction sites to closely monitor the progress of a construction operation and the implementation by workers of the uh, preventive measures to combat the global corona pandemic. In an interview with the National Television, the Director of the National Laboratory of Building and Construction Equipment, Mr. Ibrahim Ahmed Musa, explained that this visit is part of the inspection to the extent the, uh, to which construction workers apply procedures and just use to prevent coronavirus. And hear what she said. A visit was made, an unannounced visit. It was very well at the sites. Everyone wore the masks. Today, as I told you before, there is a neglect. So we, the public and private companies, are begging the public and private companies to respect the wearing of masks in situations that do not allow it. That is to say, site meetings during the pouring of concrete, during transport, during meals in the restaurants, any moment that does not allow it respect the distance, to be able to privilege the wearing of the mask. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the President of the Republic, who is at the forefront of the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank all the staff of my ministry, the Ministry of Equipment and Transport, who are always there to support us in our work. Now, the Djibouti Agency for Social Development and the Center for Leadership in Entrepreneurship launched the activities of the FORGE project funded by the World Bank within the Center for Leadership and Entrepreneurship for the coming of Bula House in the presence of the Director General to the Center CLE, namely Ubah Ahmed Malo, the Director General of the ADDS, Mahdi Mohamed Jama, and the President of the coming of Bula House, Mr. Mohamed Omar Ismail. Under the high patronage of the Ministry of Social Affairs and Solidarity, the Djibouti a Social Development Agency, in partnership with the CLE Central Forge project, supported by the World Bank, aims to meet all the challenges of professional integration and to further strengthen all forms of economic opportunities and the social inclusion of young people from the municipality of Bilaus. Thus, the Forge project is to completely in line with this logic by adding a set of new features layout in innovation. Thus, the Forge pro project administered with the Center for Leadership and Entrepreneurship of and the ADDS will have two essential mission of improving the accessibility of young people and women to opportunity with the ADDS to create income and job through the provision of training, support, and the granting of funding for the implementation of their income generating activities. The challenge of this initiative is to fight against extreme poverty and reduce urban inequalities by improving to, uh, the living condition of the inhabitants. Now, the management of the CDCs of the SEGS in collaboration with the Djiboutian Handball Federation officially launched this afternoon the Enter CDCs tournament at the uh, CDCs. Several personalities took part in this ceremony, including the Secretary General of the SEGS, Mrs. Uh, Khadiga, the Director of the CDC, Mrs. Wogia, the President of the Djiboutian Handball Federation, Mr. Ahmed Mohamed, as well as several other members of the SEGS and the Federation.
The objective of this tournament is, first of all, to occupy the young uh, people after a long period of inactivity because of the COVID-19, but especially to detect nuggets which will tomorrow come to reinforce the national uh, team. A number of 12 teams in total, that is 12 cities, the tournament will take place in strict compliance with the barrier measures imposed. Now the Directorate of Rural Hydraulics, in collaboration with the Norwegian Refugee Council, organized a training and vitalization workshop for hygiene promoters and wash committees from the refugee village of Al Ade and Holhol on good hygiene practices. This initiative is part of the implementation of the wash project in the refugee villages, implemented by the Directorate of Rural Hydraulic DHR and the financed by the High Commission for Refugees UNHCR. A total of 20 hygiene promoters and five members of the WACH committee from the two refugee villages of Ali Ate and Holod benefited from this three-day training. The training workshop was jointly led by the two experts in water hygiene and sanitation from the Ministry of Agriculture, Water, Fishing, Livestock and Fisher Resources, and an expert from the Ministry of Health as well as uh, Mustafa Hassan Ahmed, National Coordinator of the WASH project in Refugees Village. During this training, the participants acquired basic knowledge on hygiene promotion in accordance with the WASH program. Also, didactic communication tools that will enable them to inculcate good habits to the inhabitants of the refugees' village were presented to them in a detailed manner. On the sidelines of the visit uh, to the uh, delegation to Dagiru Galafi, the Mata Association, the President Mr. Ahmed Goita, organized a day of sensitization uh, to prevention against the uh, COVID-19 pandemic with the distribution of protection materials in the village of Kalafi located at the border with Ethiopia. This action was combined by, with, the, with the collection of rubbish which is harmful, harmful, and hostile, uh, uh, harmful and hostile to the environmental property pardon, of the Kalafi population and those living on the axis of the uh, National One Corridor. The association distributed masks to the Kalafi population who massively participated in the action for the environment, the sub-prefect of Yoboki, the Okals of the Galafi areas, the youth, the women and the Galafi population, the Mata Association led by Mr. Ahmed Goita, who actively militates for the development of the Galafi border sectors through which the majority of the Ethiopian imports and export passes is warmly thanked. A special respectful and discreet greetings and thanks to the uh, prefect of uh, Dihe. Now north and south, twinning the Okarians in the spotlights, it is a sports complex of Tajura that they were welcomed in the afternoon of a Sunday 26 through 7, 2020. While respecting the gesture barrier set up by the sub direction, in particular the washing of hands, as a reminder, the twinning meetings are in the line with the policy of a State Secretary for Youth and Sport and are a friendly and accessible to all in order to work toward a pure and perfect Djibouti promoting communication, access to each other culture, a great getting, uh, getting to know each other, getting to know each other, creating friendly ties and enabling everyone to invest in the development of all uh, of, the, of their relations. A good number of activities are thus possible, cultural, environmental, sports and economic. Moving on to international news now, long postponed peace negotiations in Afghanistan between the government and the Taliban could finally begin as early as next week, President Ashraf Ghani said on Tuesday to an 8 July. More details in this video. Postponed peace negotiations in Afghanistan between the government and the Taliban could finally begin as early as next week, President Ashraf Ghani said on Tuesday, 28 July, endorsing a short truce decreed by the insurgents. The ceasefire should come into effect as early as Friday, the day of the beginning of Eid al-Adha, the feast of sacrifice, traditionally marked by family gatherings. Al-Mujahideen are under orders not to conduct operations against the enemy during the three days and nights of Eid al-Adha. Taliban spokesman Zawullah Mujahid said in a statement, but any possible attack by the enemy will result in the use of force in response, he warned. Shortly after, the Afghani government ordered all security and defense forces to respect the ceasefire, according to President Ghani's spokesman Sadiq Sadiri.
However, he added they will have to respond if the Taliban attack our forces or our people. This is it for this edition of 9pm. Thank you for watching us and have a wonderful evening.